If you sell print on demand and you follow print on demand news, then you probably know that embroidery is all the talk right now. And that's because we're finally seeing the catalog from Printful, which had all the embroidery options being brought into the Printify platform. And we are seeing so many products being offered with embroidery now. So if we take a look at the catalog, they have their own pretty much area for embroidery. We click on this. We have t-shirts, sweatshirts, zip up hoodies. We have hats. We have different types of jackets so many options that you can embroider on. And along with this, we are also seeing a bunch of new print areas, including the large center chest, which is one of the most popular spots people have been waiting for to be able to embroider on. And being able to offer embroidered products in our store allows us to charge higher because this is a massive value add to a sweatshirt or hat, for example. Depending on the type of niche, what type of design you're creating, some people highly, highly prefer embroidery and are willing to pay a lot more for it. And with embroidered products, because people are willing to pay more, you can get a higher profit margin. You'll most likely get a lot less complaints because these aren't going to fade. The print isn't going to fall off after a few washes and the quality is amazing. And I just got in a bunch of samples so you can actually see how well these turn out. I actually have not received one bad sample of an embroidered product yet. So I have this one that I created a custom lake life zip up sweatshirt which i love because i am a zip up girl i got the comfort colors text right here looks amazing i've got my hat here which says papa so three different products three different complete different fabrics but every design that i got has turned out wonderful but the number one question i get from people when talking about embroidery is how do i create mock-ups for embroidered products without having to buy a sample of each one because that is going to cost you so much money and for a long time in in the past, I was using this file that I created, which I'm gonna share with you at the end as well, which you might've heard me speak about on how I create embroidered products, but I just discovered a brand new way, which I think makes these look the most realistic in any way that I have seen online. And I've done a lot of researching in how to make realistic embroidered mock-ups. So if you do want to use this method, you are going to need to use Kittle. If you want 25% all plans, I have that linked in my description and at the top of the comments. So say this is my design here. And I want you to keep in mind that when you're designing for embroidery, that your designs should be very simple. Your designs should be very limited colors. When I'm creating embroidered products, I don't think I've ever really made ones with more than one color. I usually keep them flat just so I know that these are going to stitch well, because designing for embroidery versus designing for DTG printing is very different. And if you would like to see a design tutorial or the top types of styles that do well for embroidery, comment design tutorial, I guess, in the comments below, and I'll prioritize making that as my next video. But back to the point, say this is my design here. I now want to create a mock-up photo of this embroidered products and put it on a bunch of my different mock-ups. So let's say, for example, we're doing a hat and we have a hat that is black, navy, maroon. So we're going to have to make a mock-up version of this file to put on all of those. And the best way to do it now is using the brand new Kittle Flows. And if you haven't watched the full tutorial on that, I will link that up here because that is the last video I did on this and it's super helpful to know. But after I finished that video, I realized the power that we could use with the Kittle Flows here and for our designs and embroidery. So what you'll do is on the board that you have your design and you can have a version here that is both your white version and then I'm going to duplicate this artboard and I'm also going to make a black version because maybe some of my designs are going to be printed on a a light color shirt so we need both here but let's do this white one first what I'm gonna do is click on the artboard at the top here and under tools I'm gonna hit add smart board and then once I hit that we're going to see under here a prompt so under the sidebar over here where it says smart board I'm gonna type in something like make this design look embroidered on a white Actually, I need a black hat since this is a white design. You want the contrast to be as much as possible. So we're gonna put this on a black hat and you can make this look embroidered on a sweatshirt, on a t-shirt. For some reason, I find that I seem to get really good results with a hat, but it really doesn't matter what you do because you're gonna see how we're going to use this and it might not be the way that you're thinking. And here's the result we got on this one. But you might be wondering, okay, this is on a black hat, but what if I actually want this design on sweatshirts? If I want this on t-shirts, for example, 
example. Well, we're actually not going to be using this exact file, but what we're going to be doing so that we can make all of our mockups in every single color for this design is we're going to zoom in. I'm going to take a screenshot around this design here. Then I'm going to create a new artboard. So you can hit A or on the bottom here, you can just grab the artboard button. I usually just hit A because I am a shortcut girl. I'm going to draw out my size here because I usually like my mockups to be around 2000 at least by 2000 so that it fits on Etsy. I'm going to make it out to this size. And then what I'm going to do is bring in that screenshot. And now, first of all, I want you to see how detailed this is. If you scroll in here, you're able to see each and every individual stitch, even where things turn, it includes the stitching on how it's likely going to actually print. So this is super detailed. You can see every single stitch. But the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to remove background. And now we have this file here, which we can actually bring in the mockups of our exact product so that we're within Etsy's guidelines. And then we can keep reusing our same mockups that are doing well for us, but using this stitching instead of our file. And now I can bring this onto my mockups. So we have right here, I put this on a different hat mockup because if I have two different color hats, I can just copy this over and then put it on both mockups. If I have it on sweatshirts, I can put it on each of my sweatshirt mockups. But if you actually zoom in, you can see all the stitching on here. And while zooming out, you might not see that much of a difference. Look how much it compares to if you were just putting your flat PNG on here. This doesn't look embroidered. If you advertise this as embroidered, your customer is probably likely not going to believe you or is going to be a lot less likely to purchase versus if they see a mockup that looks a lot more closer to how the end result is going to be when this is actually stitched. And then again, if we plan to also sell this on a product that has maybe a white background or it's an ash shirt or pink and you need a darker design. So you're making perhaps on Printify, you have the white file and the black file. Well, you're going to create a version that is black or your darker color. And you're going to create a smart board and say, make this design look embroidered on a white hat instead of black this time. Once we have this, we are going to take a screenshot of this and you're going to rebring in your file. Let's make it larger. And then we're going to use remove back background. And then there we go. Now we can place this on our design here. And it has a lot of extra shading because we use the hat. If you don't love that, you can ask again for the prompt to make it embroidered on a sweatshirt, on a white sweatshirt and do this all exactly the same. But I kind of like the shading that it gives because I find it makes it a little bit more realistic. But scrolling in, you can see depth to this. You're able to see it come off the design. So it actually makes it look 3D like it's actually going to look when it's printed. And then scrolling out, Again, it just looks like it's actually going to be embroidered than it would if you just used your regular file and then just said that it was embroidered. So there are some limitations to this, unfortunately. If you have a more complex design, if maybe you have a lot of swirls in your text, the more complex the design is, sometimes it seems that the AI just can't pick up every single part of the design. The majority of mine have been absolutely fine because my designs are usually very, very, very simple, like I've said, when it comes to embroidered products. But if you have a more difficult design that you're trying to do, you might encounter some complications, in which case you can use my embroidery file and use that to create your mockups instead. So this embroidery file is the free way to do this. So I actually will link in the description how to get this file. I highly recommend watching the full video tutorial on how to use it. And I will also link my full YouTube video up next on how to use this. But if you take a look, you actually use your exact file. So you bring in your file here. It will not change the design, ignore it going crazy. It does that when I screen share for some reason. And then coming back, you can see that it adds what looks like a stitching to it. It makes it look like it's coming out of the page more. But what it doesn't pick up is each individual thread along the corners, which the photo P does do better at that. And same with the cross stitching. So where things cross that type of effect of it looking like the stitching is changing which is how an actual embroidery thing would print. It doesn't have that, but I still stand by that this is an awesome 
free alternative should the Kittle one not work for you because perhaps your design is just a little bit too complicated. And so you can see the examples here. This first one here is the version of using my file, the free one here. So you can see it adds a stitching. It does look more off the page. The second version here, we have the Kittle version, which I just noticed the J's a little off. If you have anything funny, just redo the prompt and it's going to retry it. I actually didn't catch that earlier on until just now, but I would just re-roll it and usually you can get it to get very similar to your exact design. But if you can't, again, that's in the case that you can use this file here. But the most realistic one is the Kittle one here. You can see each individual stitch, the way the stitching crosses over when it switches letters, for example. And then we have the option if you just did nothing, which I don't think is going to sell your embroidery that well. And then I also have these two designs here. This one, which was all of a kind of text one. And if we scroll up, I want to see how it would handle icons as well. And taking a look at this one, I think it turns out awesome. So it is very rare that these do turn out bad. You have to have a very kind of font heavy, like crazy fonts for this to turn out pretty badly, but do just double check your design and what comes out to make sure nothing has gone wonky when actually converting it to embroidery, because it does happen. Just generate again, if it is kind of wonky until you're happy with it. This one really, I've usually been able to get them off of the first one. Sometimes I've had to roll it two or three times, but even this one, which is very heavy in design and different elements, turned out amazing. And scrolling in just so you can see all of the detail in this. So if you plan to start amping up your store and adding embroidered products, which is an awesome way, again, to bring value to your designs, create simple designs and still really make them stick out, then offering the embroidery with Printify is such a good option, but you do have to make sure that you're making good, realistic mock-up photos. And these are the different ways that I've been able to figure out for you to be able to do, pick whichever way, just you do have to put in the extra little work, like doing something like this to make sure that your mock-ups stick out and actually show the value that you're offering with your embroidery. And if you want to learn more about embroidery before you offer it, I have so many different videos on my channel. I'll be making more now that there are more embroidered options available to us. And if you have any questions or things you would like me to make a video about, let me know in the comments below. Thanks guys. And I'll see you next week.